Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. This is number 49 for Early Intermediate and we have a brilliant suggestion from Alpaco Atay. Alpaco Atay. All the way from Turquía. Okay. Yeah. And he says, Hola, estoy aprendiendo español y me gustan mucho vuestros podcasts. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Me ayudaron mucho. Y tengo una pregunta para vosotros. ¿Tenéis un podcast que hable sobre las diferencias entre el pretérito indefinido y el pretérito perfecto? ¿Vale? Muchos. <risas> Os pregunto porque no he visto eso en vuestro sitio web. ¿Ok? Bueno, hemos hablado largo y tendido... Sobre el pretérito This y el... is English one, by the way. Oh, okay. But he then wrote, I hope I wrote all that correctly, beautifully. And you even use the subjunctive, eh? Which yeah. is very impressive. I wouldn't so be worried welcome. about the pretérito and imperfects after that. Absolutely. <laughs> Así que, vamos a hablar de eso. Y nos vemos en la, en segunda, la segunda parte. parte. So, the first thing that I had to do was to look up the definition of those names. No, the eh, pretérito indefinido y pretérito perfecto. Pretérito perfecto is the preterite. The no, pretérito... Perfecto is the present perfect. Present perfect, exactly, pretérito perfecto. And pretérito. The, the indefinido is the, what we call the preterite. Exactly. But the reason, alpaco... The reason that you can't find that on our page is because you're using the names that we don't use. There, there are tons of different names for, for um, these tenses. What we tend to say is the preterite past is the um, indefinido, and then we use the present perfect for the, um, for the um, preterite per perfecto. Do you know what happened? That sometimes it's confusing because in the books it says, for example, preterito imperfecto, preterito perfecto. Mm -hmm. So, the preterito imperfecto would be the imperfect, preterito perfecto is the preterite. Is the preterite, yeah. Yes. And in other books they call it el preterito indefinido, which is the preterite, right? Nightmare. So, and when my son said to me, I have to make sentences with the perfect, when el perfecto, I, I made him do sentences with the present, present perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah. There, are ton, there Because, is a big confusion with names. Mm -hmm. There's a big confusion. The worst name that I think that they could possibly give the preterite tense is the indefinite tense. Like, the preterite couldn't be any more definite. I mean, it is well, absolutely We have names definite. like plusquam perfecto. Yeah. We'll yeah. not get into that because I get... More than I, perfect. Plusquam perfecto. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, get, I get vexed when we talk about names. Anyway, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to give you an overview of the difference between the... the the perfect tense, which is the he comido, and the preterite tense, which is comí. Yeah? All right? Okay. What is the difference and when should we use one and when should we use the other? Okay. okay. So let's have a, let's just use those as an example. So first of all, the, the, pred, the perfect tense goes like this. He comido, has comido, ha comido... Hemos comido, habéis comido, han comido. Mm -hmm. yeah? So I have eaten, you have eaten, we have eaten, all yes. of that. Yeah. When do we use that, Cynthia? So we use that mm, past tense mm -hmm. when it's a... Um, well, some people say a recent past tense, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be necessarily recent. It has to be something that is still applies now. For example, anything that is today, or this week, or this month, this year, this decade. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's something that started in the past, but it's still, it's still um, applicable. Still applicable. Cor uh, applicable, yeah. applicable. Or still or, or current, current now, yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other one is something that happened in the past and is not applicable Applicable, did you say? Uh -huh. Now, okay? It's not current now. Mm. So that's why when, so when people say, oh, it's the, pre it's the um, a recent past, 
yes and no sometimes and no. not exactly. not always okay um for example if you talk about today it's also the way you view time okay because it's different in different cultures for example if, if i'm talking about today and depending on the time and the country but if i've had breakfast and uh, it's let's say it's one in the afternoon okay and i can ask gordon being from spain i can ask i can ask Gordon, eh, has desayunado have you mm -hmm. had breakfast because maybe still you can have breakfast okay mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. but maybe in other places it would be a pasta is not applicable now because you can't have breakfast anymore it's finished Sure. Okay, so for example, I could say, ¿Desayunaste esta mañana? Did you have breakfast this morning? Yeah, so it's not yeah. legal now because we're not in the morning, in my opinion, or in in a time frame that you can still have breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Um, or we can use it for something that doesn't have a time attached to it, like, have you ever? Uh, ¿Alguna vez has, has ido a Egipto? Have you ever been to Egypt? And that is still a time frame that we're attached to. It's in your life. Exactly. And There's not. It's not. Yeah. Even though it would be in the past, like yeah, three years ago I went to mm. Egypt. But because we don't know, we're asking in your lifetime, have you ever? Sure. Because you're still uh -huh. alive. You're still in the la the last day of your life at every every point of your of your life. Yeah. That's how I would uh, yeah. differentiate both of them. Okay. So what's, what's interesting about the two tenses is that many times you can use both. Many times you can use both. It just depends on, on what you want to communicate. For example, here in Spain, if you, if you fall, slip, yeah, you, you tend to use present tense. And that you tend to say, ooh, ooh, me caigo, no? Oh, casi, casi me caigo. Casi me caigo. Yeah, we say, I, ost I almost fall. Casi me caigo, uh -huh. okay? But you could say, me caído en, en la calle, no? Mm -hmm. Me caído. And it's like, I've just fallen. Yeah. I've just fallen, yeah? But equally, you could say, sabes, me caí en la, la, la yeah. calle. I fell. Yes. It could be exactly the same time. But with me caído, it's like, do you know that in this period of time that I'm talking about, up to now, I, I fell, yeah? What you can't do, what you, so, so you, can, you can use the, the, both of them, but what you can't do is to use the present perfect, which is the me caído. You can't say, me caído I did. No. That won't go, yeah? It won't work, will it? No. Be why? Because we've cut the time frame. We're talking about yesterday now. Yeah, okay. yes. this week you could say, ¿sabes? Me he caído tres veces esta semana. Right? Ayer, antes de ayer, el lunes. Okay, so you can do that. But what happens is if I say to Cynthia, eh, ¿te has caído esta semana? And if Cynthia says, yes, on Monday I fell, she can't say, me he caído el lunes. You've got to say, me caí el lunes. Exacto. ¿no? All Exacto. right? Everything or every sentence that is yesterday, last year, last month, a week ago, that can't go in, into the I have a category anymore. It's, it's done. It's done with. Mm -hmm. But for example, cultural differences uh, in some uh, parts, they, they would say, what did you do today? And in other places, they, they would say, what have you done today? Mm. That depends on how you view. Do you view the day as something finished? Or do you view the day as something that is still going? ¿Qué has hecho hoy? Mm. If I say, ¿qué has hecho hoy? In my mind, the day is not over. Yeah, up to this point, what have yeah? you done? Which yeah? is what we tend to say in Spain. In Spain, we tend to say, ¿qué has hecho hoy? Because hoy is still current. Mm -hmm. Um. But there are places in which they they would say que hiciste hoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my mind, that would be okay. We may be at the last hours of the day, and the day is practically over. Yeah. And you're not going to do anything else. 
Yeah. So what what did you do? But, but you Same. would you would never say to me, ¿Qué hiciste hoy? ¿Qué hiciste hoy? I've never heard you. I mean, you could say. You could, yeah, you yeah. You could say, like in English, I've heard, I've heard both, depending uh, on maybe where you're from. Yeah. But we tend to use with today, we tend to use the, the perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're always with the, with the, the, que has hecho, you always within the same time frame, here in Spain anyway, within the same time frame and right at the end. So for example, if you look at the week, just do, we do the week. Um, if I were talking to Cynthia and it was Monday, okay, I would say, uh, okay, ¿qué haces hoy? Okay, Monday. So what are you doing today? By Wednesday, I would say, ¿qué hiciste el lunes? Yeah, outside of the time. Okay, by Friday, I might say, ¿qué has hecho esta semana? Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but on, on Monday, I wouldn't say to Cynthia, ¿qué has hecho esta semana? Because we've just started it. Yes. It wouldn't, you know, it's, it's like, ¿qué has hecho hoy o qué haces hoy? Yeah? So it's always toward the end of, of, a, of a period of time that you're saying, ¿qué has hecho? Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? It starts in the past and it's current up to now. Yeah. So for example, at nine o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't say to Cynthia typically, ¿qué has hecho esta mañana? Well, yes, it's like if you're eating, you wouldn't ask someone, what have you eaten? Yeah. I'm still eating, so you can't exactly. ask that because that would have to be uh, today, what, what have you eaten, uh -huh. okay? Or, or this morning, what have you eaten? Or Yeah. Yes? So it's so it's not, it's it, it can be a recent past, but it doesn't have to be a re recent past. Because you say, eh, ¿Has conocido Nueva York? Sí. Eh, la conocí hace 30 años. Yeah, so... Uh, I've been I've been there thirty years ago, so it's not a recent past. But the question is kind of like in your lifetime, have you exactly? Yeah. Okay. So, en resumen. En resumen. En resumen. <laughs> both are valid tenses. If you are going to not use the present, uh, the, the the present perfect, you can in lots of lots of countries they just use the the preterite. You know. Preterite and the imperfect. Yeah. yeah. ¿Qué comiste hoy? Yeah. Here in Spain, if you're going to speak Spanish from Spain, you're going to need the present perfect because it is a very, very highly used tense. And especially when you're talking about the moment, what have you done today? What do you, you know, what have you done this week? Okay. So both, both are, are needed here in Spain. Um, but if you were in other places, maybe you wouldn't hear it as much. Okay. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And even in places in Spain, in the north. Yeah, there, there, are, there are, are some places. There and are I think villages. there are some places in Latin America that they use it. It's not yeah, just yeah, um, Spain. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So I think it's it's an important tense yes. to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, lots of, uh, of my American uh, friends have told me that if you say in the US, you know, what did you do today? That's the standard. Yeah. If you say to somebody, what have you done today? Normally, it's because you they're going to be in trouble. What have you done today? Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's like a boss might say, "What have you done today?" So that's the the difference. But here in Spain, like just like the UK, that's a standard thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bueno, because well, there's no homework on this one, is there? No, no, no that's not. That. <laughs> and done this. Uh, just before we go, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> a word from us. A word from our sponsor. Um, our sponsor being uh, our sp us. Ourselves. We are yeah. our sponsor. Yeah, we, we don't have any voiceovers. We don't have any products. Isn't it horrible when oh, we I do that? Oh, I love to have an American voiceover. Oh, hey? like an American voiceover. You know, like yeah. in the doing films, like I have to ask one somebody, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One mission. At a store near you. <laughs> products from Lightspeed Spanish. Oh, I love that. Lightspeed Spain. And that voice has to be American. I mean, yeah. it would, British wouldn't wouldn't be as good, would it? No. American, yeah. No, there you go. Yeah. Products from Lightspeed Spain. No, it just doesn't sell as yeah. much. It's like American, American. We have something that you need. <laughs> you need it and we have it. Okay, it just doesn't wash, does it? So, <laughs> and, and worse is worse is when they go, um, yeah, so just a word from our sponsor. Well, this phone, 
<laughs> is really really good and, and and I use it all of the time because <laughs> you're supposed to be teaching me Spanish well, why are you that, talking about phones that you use it all of the time <laughs> that's true this, no this phone is really good but I'm not selling that okay uh, it's really good it's my friend we on a weekly basis we produce um, for our um, uh, socios two lessons and one of those lessons is with Cynthia and myself and one's myself on, on my own doing what's called Chogan Talk. Every lesson that we produce with Cynthia and myself, there is homework. Um, there's a full transcription of the conversation that we have. And, and translation. And, and translation, yeah. And and the Chogan Talk, I always do things which are mostly in English and they're like kind of like a lesson feel of, you know, having me in the classroom and I'm, and I'm helping you, coaching you through stuff, okay? Two lessons a week we produce, but we also have lots and lots. We have a catalogue of, of lessons now. So if you're interested in really moving your Spanish forward, then that might be something worthwhile looking at. You can test it out freely for a month, yeah, with, mm -hmm. uh, with um, the coupon, which is free month. It's called that. Uh, we, we try to keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> you can have a free month by putting in free month, yeah? And uh, you can try it out and see if you like it, but... The other positive part of it, he said swallowing, uh, the other positive part of it is that um, you can request the lessons. All of the lessons, like 95% of the lessons are done because we've been requested them by the socios. All right, so it's kind of like a, your own personal lesson that yeah. you can ask for, mm -hmm. okay? So it's there if you're interested and you can find it on our website under Ser Socio. Muy bien. ¿Algo más? ¿Puedes terminar con una voz, eh, un anuncio americano? O sea, voz, voz okay. de Venga. película. Venga. Es que tengo... Y sí, ya nos despedimos. Solamente para decir nos vamos y nos vemos, pero... Vale. Bueno, di algo en inglés, americano. Ok. <risa> so if you want to move your Spanish forward... <risa> if you want to talk like a true native... All you need is ser socio. At a website near you soon. That's very good. I'm yeah. sure American people will be like, oh well, my that's God. That's terrible what accent. That? What yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. It sounded really good. Bueno. Muy bien, muy bien. I want to sign up. <laughs> I, I believe myself so much, I want to sign up. Okay, entonces chicos, eso es todo. Nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego, adiós. Adiós.